right. Picture this. Before the universe existed, there was literally nothing. No space, no time, no matter. Not even darkness, because you need space for it to be dark in. And somehow, from that, everything appeared. Galaxies, stars, planets, us all out of nowhere. Sounds insane, right? How can something come from nothing? Here's the catch. No one even agrees on what nothing means. Physicists say it's a quantum vacuum full of energy. Philosophers say it's the total absence of everything, even laws or logic. So today, let's unpack what nothing actually means and whether the universe really came from it. Or if that's just another clever story we made up. Philosophers have argued about nothing for over 2,000 years, and most of them think it doesn't even make sense. Parmenides said nothing can't exist, because the moment you talk about it, it becomes something. Even saying Atlantis doesn't exist means you're already imagining Atlantis. Then came the atomists like Democritus, who said there is something called the void empty space, but it's still a thing because particles move inside it. Centuries later, Christianity introduced creation from nothing, God creating the universe without using any pre-existing material. That changed the debate. Not what's inside the void, but how anything can start without a cause. But even then, people couldn't describe it without turning nothing into something. You can't imagine nothing because your brain instantly fills it with something. In quantum physics, nothing isn't empty. Even if you remove all particles and matter, you're left with the quantum vacuum, and that vacuum isn't blank. The uncertainty principle says energy levels in space can never be exactly zero. There are always tiny fluctuations, creating brief particle-antiparticle pairs called virtual particles. Their effects can be measured. The Casimir effect shows two metal plates in a vacuum attract slightly due to these particles. Hawking radiation, which makes black holes lose mass, also comes from quantum fluctuations. So yes, particles can appear out of nothing. But that nothing isn't the absence of everything. The quantum vacuum has energy, laws and structure. When people say quantum mechanics shows something can come from nothing, that's misleading. It shows something can emerge from a vacuum, a state that already follows physical laws. That's not nothing. Alexander Vilenkin proposed that the universe appeared through quantum tunneling, like particles crossing barriers they shouldn't. The universe tunnels from a state with no classical space or time into an expanding one. He calls that nothing, but it's really a mathematical state with potential. The Hartle-Hawking no-boundary proposal says the universe has no sharp beginning time, gradually emerges from a smooth, curved geometry instead of a sudden creation. Roger Penrose's conformal cyclic cosmology suggests the universe goes through endless cycles, each expanding, fading, and becoming the next. The common point. None start from true nothingness. They all assume some underlying structure, quantum laws, or mathematical conditions. So when people say the universe came from nothing, they usually mean from a state we don't yet fully understand. Even if the universe came from physics, where did the laws come from? Some physicists think the laws are eternal, the basic framework reality runs on. Max Tegmark's mathematical universe hypothesis says the universe isn't just described by math, it is math. Every part of reality is part of a single mathematical structure existing beyond time and space. Physicist John Wheeler coined it from bit, the idea that everything physical comes from information. The universe isn't made of matter, but of binary data, ones and zeros. If that's true, reality isn't physical, it's informational. Matter and time could be outcomes of how data is arranged. But even then, the same question remains. Why does that informational structure exist at all? Why not nothing? A 
assume there was already something a chaotic, high-energy mess after the Big Bang. How do you get galaxies and life from that? This is where entropy and emergence come in. Entropy means disorder always increases. But local order can form if disorder rises elsewhere. Life on Earth builds order by using solar energy and releasing heat into space. The same thing happened cosmically. Tiny quantum fluctuations after the Big Bang created density differences and gravity turned them into galaxies and stars. So order can form from chaos, but only because the universe follows consistent physical laws. Even randomness needs rules. Order from chaos means structure from physics, not something from nothing. Another idea is simulation theory. Philosopher Nick Bostrom suggested our universe could be a super-advanced computer simulation. Everything we experience, matter, time, consciousness, could be digital code. In that case, nothing would mean the program hasn't started yet. The Big Bang could be the moment the code began running. It sounds like science fiction, but it's taken seriously because it doesn't contradict physics. It just shifts the question to who or what is running it. But even here, a simulation still needs hardware, a programmer, and logical rules. Those things must exist first. So nothing still isn't nothing. No one has ever shown that true nothing can create something. Every theory, quantum, cosmological, mathematical, or simulated, still starts with something. Laws, energy, or information. Absolute nothing. No space, no time, no logic can't produce anything. There's no mechanism, no cause. That's why many think nothing might not exist at all. It's just a word for what we don't yet understand. And that's fine. The fact that we're here asking the question already proves something extraordinary happened, even if we don't know how. If you found this interesting, hit like, share it with someone curious, and subscribe for more deep dives like this. Check out Xenosphere Originals. We make videos that challenge how you see the world.